What's up, my meatball-loving little lingon berries? This is Rob from a Gay Guy Plays, and today on Hashtag Confirm, we're jumping into DevStream 129 to take a look at all of Goss's abilities, as well as everything that we know about him so far. So let's go ahead and kick things off with his release date. Now, they have not given us a solid release, but they did state that they will be releasing him alongside Grendel, which kind of makes me feel a little like, uh, mainly because of the fact that, you know, that's two Warframes that they need to go through, balance, and do all of the kind of like bundles for and throw out the marketing for at the same time. So that's kind of like double the work, and I feel like it might end up holding him back. But D.E. Scott did mention the fact that he is done with Grendel's ability set and that he's actually moving on to rework Vobon. So maybe we won't be seeing them too far off. I'm thinking he's probably going to hand them off to QA, make sure all of the damage numbers are balanced, and then go ahead and toss it out to us after all of that is set. So do keep in mind that Goss is going to be released with his partner Grendel. So, semi-feature Rob popping in here real quick because I completely forgot to mention his stats. Now, as you can see on screen, he does have an armor of 150, which seems to be a base stat. However, his energy is sitting at a whopping 638, and for me, that has definitely got to be modified because I don't see the DE staff giving a Warframe a base stat so freaking high and so oddly numbered. Uh, next up, we have a health of 300 and a shield of 450, which also seems to be base stats. And the last number that we have here is the sprint speed, which sits at 1.4. And I was like, 1.4? Like, that's gotta be modified, right? So I actually went ahead and jumped in game to toss Rush on a couple different Warframes, and what I realized is at a 1.1 speed, if you toss a Rush on that that's maxed out, it actually brings it up to 1.43. If you use it on Loki Prime, I believe it ended up jumping up to like a 1.63, so it was never like a perfect 1.4. So unless they tossed on a, ro a Rush, a Rosh, that was not fully leveled, then um, I don't understand how they landed at 1.4 for a modified speed, so I'm thinking in my head that this might be Goss's base speed, which would be kind of insane. In addition to all that, I actually wanted to go ahead and show off the alternate helmet that they had for Goss. Um, now, I didn't get a good look at this when they actually went into RPM mode. I don't even remember if they went into RPM mode with it. If it is, it's in a clip in the video right now, uh, but per usual, the the alternate helm I think is a little bit prettier than the base helm. What are you gonna do? Regardless, uh, I'll go ahead and pass it back to Pass Rob. Boop! Um, next up, let's go ahead and take a look at his abilities. The first thing that we have to look at is his passive. Now, his passive is really interesting because it works off of his RPM gauge, which you'll actually see on the right side of your screen. So this actually increases shield recharge speed based on the RPM meter. So the more RPM meter you have, the more that you'll be able to regenerate your shields faster, which is a definitely a nice additive when it comes to his survivability. Moving along, let's take a look at his first skill, which is Mock Rush. Now, this one is the one that scares me a little bit. However, I do have to say, after they uh, explain to us exactly how it's going to work, I'm kind of excited about it. Uh, now, if you guys watched the video where I actually went ahead and covered all of the Empyrean stuff and how I said I wanted to take my Railjack and ram it into other ships, and that would be my number one mental priority, I'll go ahead and link that video up there just in case you guys did not catch it. But this is exactly what's happening with Mach Rush. So if you tap it real quick, you'll get a quick burst of speed in whatever direction you're looking. But if you hold it down, you'll be able to have a like long duration run. But the only thing that they did want to make sure to like stress to you guys is it's going to be very different from Volt because Volt you kind of just get the movement speed and you get to like run around and be able to like steer yourself fairly easily. When it comes to Goss, he does not have as much control over his direction when he is in this state which isn't necessarily the worst thing because one of the things that you want to do with Mock Rush is actually run into terrain and run over enemies. So when you run into terrain, you'll actually use that uh, kinetic speed that you've built up to create an area of effect explosion around you. Now, when it comes to enemies, you'll actually plow through them, knocking them down. So if you run into walls, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It might just be a little bit of a startle for you, but you can actually weaponize that in a good way. 
definitely happy about that one. Uh, there is one note that I don't know if you caught it because everybody was hemming and hawing over it during the Empyrean demo, but they did show that Goss could run over water. Keep in mind, you have to keep running over the water or you're gonna fall into the water, which I mean, I guess is realistic. Running over water isn't really realistic, but I mean, if you think about it, if you stopped running over water, if you could run over water, you would probably fall into the water. So it's as realistic as running over water is going to get. Uh, moving along, his second ability is Kinetic Plating. Now this seems to be a timed toggle. That's what I was looking at on the screen when Rebecca had it going. Basically, you would see her toggle it on, there would be a timer, and then she would toggle it off, the timer would disappear, so on and so forth. But Kinetic plating basically drains your RPM meter, so keep that in mind. You have the little RPM meter on the side, which looks like it's powered up by you running or you moving, something along those lines. They did not go into specific details, but it did look like the RPM meter was increasing while Rebecca was moving around on its own. So, um, kinetic plating will drain your RPM meter to protect you from physical cold and heat damage. Now. They specifically said the word protect. They didn't say absorb. So I'm thinking that it's gonna be a damage reduction ability because I was watching the shield go off um, on the screen as they were being hit and it looked like they were taking a little bit of damage. Not sure exactly if it's gonna be a full on protection, but they did specifically say protect. So I'm assuming it's gonna be a damage reduction and any of the damage that you take is going to be converted into energy. It didn't look like it was a lot of energy being converted, so it might just be a portion of the damage that you take will be converted into energy. But that's at least a nice way to, number one, um, be able to keep yourself alive as you are literally kamikaze into your enemies. And number two, keep your energy up just a little bit in order for you to use the rest of your abilities to put yourself in a state where you're not constantly dying. Um, now, they did say that when you're using kinetic plating, along with your mock rush whenever you barrel through enemies uh, you will actually apply a slash proc onto them which is fantastic if you think about it because not only are you getting the slash proc damage but you can also use that with your condition overload if you're in the melee space now um, the next ability that I wanted to go ahead and talk about was thermal sunder this one is very very interesting um, because it seems to create an AoE and if you pay very close attention to the AoE, um, it looks like it kind of goes out and then it slowly starts shrinking in and then after it's shrinked in a little bit, it just lingers. So that's what I was noticing on screen, but basically what happens is you can tap Thermal Sunder to create a cold AoE um, and then you can hold Thermal Sunder for a heat-based AoE. Now, the cool thing about this is the fact that you can actually combo this. If you tap twice, so you cast your cold AoE, then you cast another cold AoE, it'll actually freeze everybody that is affected. Now, if you do a hold hold, which is two fires, you'll actually create um, an even more powerful fire dot. Um, in addition to that, you can actually do something that I don't think any other Warframe has been able to do, which was create a combined element. So if you tap for a cold and you do your cold AoE, then you hold for heat, you'll actually create a blast AoE, which will knock every one of those enemies down. So if you think about the gameplay with this, you can go ahead and rush into enemies. You can go ahead and tap for cold, which will end up slowing them down. And then you can go ahead and hit them with the fire, which will blast knock them down. And if you've got kinetic plating as well as mock rush on, you might have applied the slash proc to them. So in that time, you've applied several different statuses, and I think that this might be great for some condition overload. I'm just saying. Um, now, they did say that they were going to make sure that they balance this because they did not want this to feel like it was stepping on Ember or Frost's toes. So this is what we're currently working with at this moment. But I do think it's a very interesting ability, and I think that it opens up a dialogue for either reworking some of the old abilities that we have on Warframes or opening up new doors for other Warframes in the future. So love it when they add new mechanics in. Next up, we have his ultimate ability, and this actually works with his um, RPM gauge. So as you know, there's an RPM gauge on the side, but there's also an extra little nubbins at the top. So think about it as kind of like if you're driving um, a manual and you've got like the shaft and then you've got the head, right? The head never really fills up. 
unless you're using red line. So when you use red line, it actually unlocks the little top, I guess like the head of the RPM meter thing, and then you're able to fill up the top. So as you're moving, you're gaining more RPM, and once you hit 100% on the red line meter, basically what ends up happening is you get a buff to your reload speed, your running speed, and your melee speed. And on top of that, the whole time, it looked like the whole time, it didn't look like you had to hit 100% for this one, you're actually emitting all of these um, damage particles. So it looks like, they look like basically like mini wisps flying off of you and seeking enemies that are around you. So basically, it's a buff with some damage particles that run around. And that's basically it to his ultimate. Uh, the only thing that I do have to mention is that when you are using his ultimate, once the duration of the ultimate is done, if you are at 100% with your red line meter, um, only the overcharged red line part at the top will dissipate. However, if you are underneath the, the I guess, the, the head of the red line meter thing, and you're down here in this area, all of that will deplete. So make sure that you're getting to 100% on your red line and that you're not anywhere down here. Because if you're down here, it's just all going to come down after you've expended your red line. The effects on red line look absolutely amazing. And the other thing to note is that when you do go red line, all of the panels on your Goss open up. And that's where all of the little particles come out. So it looks really, really cool. He looks really, really jittery. Um, so... All in all, from the gameplay that she had out on the planes, it looked really cool, but I do have to make note that none of it was modded, uh, so it doesn't really reflect exactly how it's going to be. Plus, on the planes, she did have several uh, like dev hacks on. Now, when she went and played this in an actual mission, and it was Adaro, uh, it didn't seem all that great, but again, like I was saying, she didn't have any mods on, nothing to do with efficiency, shields, um, health, uh, power strength, none of that going on, no duration-based stuff. So she did experience some issues with not having enough energy. She had to use transference a couple times to kind of restore. I did catch her using an energy pizza, because remember, kids, they were pizzas. They still are pizzas in my heart and soul. Um, but yeah, so I did notice that a little bit. When indoors, it does look like the gameplay is just a little bit jankier. But of course, like, this is early days for everybody on the team playing with Goss. So Rebecca probably hasn't had the, you know, biggest chance to play them on live. I'm sure that, you know, for those of us people who've been around for quite a while or the dedicated players who kind of like fine-tuned uh, their way to play. I'm sure that we could find really, really interesting ways of engaging in our enemies in smaller, tighter towel sets. Uh, but really, all it comes down to is I'm interested in just ramming things. I mean, the one thing I have to say about DE is while I don't necessarily know if Goss is going to be an end game frame, like... I already am leaning towards no, but of course I want to see what the percentages look like. I want to see um, what the damage numbers are going to look like. I want to see how well the CC functions, so on and so forth. So I don't want to judge it, you know what I mean, straight out of the gate without actually using it at all, especially uh, without being able to toss my mods on there. Um, so for me right now, it doesn't really look like it's going to be an end game frame, and DE is not really good at making that kind Well, DE can make that kind of stuff, but DE is better at making fun stuff. And that's what Goss is looking to be. He's looking to be a fun frame. So the question is exactly how much fun is there going to be had when you're running into walls and you're slamming into enemies? I don't know. We'll have to see how that all plays out. I am hopeful for it. So cross your fingers that everything goes well and cross your fingers that they get Grendel done ASAP too because I want to see this dynamic duo. I'm waiting for the ships. Where are the ships? Where's the fan art? I'm saying OTP. The Fast and the Famished, just putting it out there. Regardless, that is going to do it for me for now. Let me know how you guys feel about um, Goss so far down in the comments below. I'm really loving his armor, and Rebecca did some decent fashion frame for once. I wasn't going to judge it. Uh, regardless, that about does it for me for now. Stay tuned because I am going to be jumping into the rest of the dev stream in a separate video. But as always, love somebody, hurt nobody, and touch your body. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.